Today's news. Human rights defender threatened by customs officials. Protest meeting against Iran held in Baku. Civil Society Institute disappointed with Council of Europe. Residents' properties rights may lead to tragedy. Appeals Court rejects Yanni Musavat's appeal. More problems with the world's largest flag. Kerr Civil Society sues the government. The Institute for Reporters' Freedom and Safety Chairman Amin Husseinov was threatened and harassed last night by the State Border and Customs Committee at the Haydar Aliyev Airport in Baku. Husseinov reported on the events at a press conference at the IRFS Press Center this afternoon. He was detained at the customs checkpoint while returning from a professional trip to Dubai and was held for three hours without food or drink. There was a huge queue at customs. Lots of people were being stopped, especially people with blackberries. They charged a fee for, of 75 AZN for each phone. Most people were released after meeting privately with officials. I was told that I had to write a statement. I wrote a statement and listed the equipment I was bringing back from Dubai. I had brought two TVs, two mobile phones, car lamps, and a car CD player. When I left Azerbaijan two days ago, I had two old cameras with me because I wanted to buy new memory cards. Officials made me list the two old cameras along with my personal mobile phones in the statement. However, they did not issue an official's customs fee receipt. They simply informed me that my possessions were being confiscated, said Hussein. He added that he had been treated extremely badly by at least 10 different customs employees and that the whole procedure had gone improperly documented without witnesses and without the right to explain to him. One official approached me with a knife in his hand when he heard me questioning the legality of what was going on. At least 20 security cameras recorded these events, Hussein added. And despite having a second-level disability, he said, he was forced by the customs employee to carry his things, which caused him physical problems. Only after receiving medical treatment at the airport did he begin to feel normal again. At the end of the conference, Husseinov stated his intention to file an appeal with the State Committee leadership. If they do not respond, he will go to the national courts and even to the European court if necessary. Let Azerbaijan be united, Tabriz be the capital. Russians, Persians and Armenians, these are the enemies of Turks. These were the slogans voiced in the picket held by the World Azerbaijani Congress in front of the Iranian embassy to Baku. Although the police did not allow protesters to approach the embassy, they were able to express their sentiments. Azeri MP Sabir Rustamkhani called on the Azerbaijanis living in Iran to fight against the Mullah regime. The Iranian regime is interfering with Azerbaijan's internal affairs and is building a pipeline for Armenia. The Mullah regime violates the cultural and national rights of Azerbaijanis in Iran. 35 million Azerbaijanis in Iran shouldn't be tolerating this. They should be protesting, he stressed. The protesters presented the picket resolution to the embassy. The document says that the Iranian media must put an end to the insults to Azerbaijanis in the Iranian media. Interference in Azerbaijan's internal affairs, attempts to create extremism in Azerbaijan, the imprisonment of southern Azerbaijanis, repression of na national activists, aid to Armenia, and attempts to make a nuclear bomb. Civil society representatives who attended the Parliamentary Association of the Council of Europe Winter Session held a press conference at the Azerbaijan Human Rights House today. Human rights defenders noted that they had held meetings during the session and attended the discussions on the 2010 Azerbaijan parliamentary elections. Civil society representatives strongly criticized the parliamentary elections. They said that the objectivity of the PACE report for, had been sacrificed for the sake of oil and gas. According to NGO representatives, the Council of Europe's report did not note any of the violations that had occurred in the 20 election constituencies, violations that were even acknowledged by the government. The representatives blamed the PACE co-rapporteurs to Azerbaijan for not being loyal to democratic principles. NGO representatives also criticized Christoph Strasser, 
PACE co-rapporteur on political prisoners for not visiting Azerbaijan. The representatives pointed out that Azerbaijani parliamentary speaker Ogte Azadov and vice speaker Zayafat Azgarov had criticized civil society representatives for attending the PACE session. They said that serious measures should be taken against these people. The representatives also recalled that the satirical poet Mirza Sakit was arrested two weeks after Asgarov criticized him back in 2006. Today, February 2nd, a court decision was executed to evict Azerbaijani citizens Rufat Dadayev and Russian citizen Luyabov Novivko from her apartment. Divorcees Dadayev and Novikova said that they were cheated, and the court ruled for confiscation of their two apartments on 46 Nizami Street, as well as a four-story building, the construction of which is incomplete. The plaintiff was Rauf Karimov, who referenced the names of high-ranking officials of the presidential administration. Rufat Dadiev, who is 58 years old, is a disabled person. On Wednesday, the court executors arrived at their building and tried to forcibly pull them out of their apartment. It resulted in his health worsening. An ambulance arrived at the scene and doctors examined him. The doctors suggested that he go to the hospital immediately. He refused. However, it did not stop. The plaintiff and the court executors were relentless. They went on breaking down the door. Dadiev's health broke down for the next time. Only after this did the court executors postpone the execution of the decision for 25 days. It became impossible to learn the plaintiff's comments. His representative also refused to comment and said that the plaintiff demanded the execution of a legal court judgment. Today, the Baku Appeals Court heard the Yeni Musavat newspaper appeal against the Yasamal District Court's December judgment. The newspaper's lawyer, Vagif Hussein, told Objective TV that the judge had rejected the appeal. The newspaper will be appealing against the decision. <laughs> Yeni Musavat lawyer, Fariz Namazali, had filed a motion during the last court session to transfer the lawsuit to the Nizami District Court on the basis that Yeni Musavat is registered in Nizami. The son of Transport Minister and businessman, Anar Mamadov, opened the libel lawsuit back in December, citing personal humiliation and damage to his business reputation after the publication of two newspaper articles. Azadlik newspaper, Freedom newspaper, published an article called Kamla Din Hedarov Eats Bear on July 1st of last year, republished by Yeni Musavat the following day. In September, Yeni Musavat printed another allegedly libelous article, Sheikh Drives Anar Mamadov Out of Dubai. Mamadov is demanding 250,000 manat compensation from each newspaper. The largest flag in the world is in trouble once again. Specially commissioned by the president, the Azerbaijani flag that flies out from Baku Bay is the biggest in the world, and it's causing problems. At six this morning, the upper part of the flagpole began to sway dangerously in the wind. The flag was lowered and a team of climbers arrived. They climbed up the tower and refastened the flag, Objective TV heard from a source wishing to remain anonymous. The residents of two nine-story buildings nearby were evacuated. They have been cleared to return, though they will be re-evacuated if there are any further problems. The first incident of this kind took place in September of last year. The flag was torn up by strong winds a day after its inaugural raising. Officials blamed the incident on the flag's material. The flag is 35 by 70 meters and weighs 350 kilograms. The pole is 162 meters high. Guinness World Records confirmed on May 29th that Azerbaijan has the tallest flag in the world. According to unofficial reports, the project cost 20 million manat. The employees of the Emergencies Ministry and several guards in the square behaved aggressively towards news employees of Chiran Information Agency, Objective TV video correspondent Rasim Aliyev and the Voice of America representative Tapdog Farhoglu. Azerbaijani civil society representatives filed a lawsuit against the Azerbaijani government and the Ministry of Emergency Situations. The Sabal District Court will consider the case. Kerr Civil Society Organization Coordinator Ogtai Gulaliev held a press conference today 
on the evaluation that the civil society organization had implemented on the losses suffered by the residents in the aftermath of floods in Kerr and Araz rivers during the spring of last year. The independent evaluation differed from that of the government agencies. The organization has appealed to the Cabinet of Ministers and the Ministry of Emergency Situations, but there has been no response, triggering the submission of the lawsuit. Turan News Agency Director Mehman Aliyev said that this is the only case in recent memory during which lawyers, journalists and NGOs are fighting together against the officials who are refusing to accept public opinion. The official silence indicates that the inspection may unveil corruption and the misuse of budget funding. According to Indigam Aliyev, an attorney, the inquiry sent to the governmental agencies questioned the composition of the committees in the regions, the number of damaged households and other details too.